So in 2005, that's when they, um, I got injured. Um, no, we got into the, uh, the situation in Iraq where that was my second tour. And uh, the incident that, that happened was when it was eight seconds delay from hitting our Humvee. So you're in a convoy, right? Yes, there we're three, in a convoy. Three Humvees, yes. and you are in the first the one. The first Humvee, okay. yeah, first Humvee. So we were passing, passing where the, um, the ID was at. The second one was the one that got hit. So it was like eight seconds, eight seconds delay. Um, so when we got hit, I uh, immediately got out of the vehicle. And um, my commander and the, uh, our other sergeant, they dispersed. They had to secure the area. My, my goal was to get to where the IED was at, in my mind. You cannot do that if you're in a, a situation like that. You have to take cover because there's always going to be a secondary attack. But um, I got the, the first aid kit. I ran into where the Humvee's at. I, all I saw was smoke. And the Humvee was sitting in the hole. And when I got closer, because my mind was, there's no survive, survival. Um, when I got there, um, there was no door, no tire. The, the gunner guy was laying on the uh, hatch. And he was my, my roommate. The guy that was sitting at the uh, passenger side, he was one of our sergeants, um, screaming for help. Um, his leg was literally about to you know, if you see a, a leaf in, you know, shred it, that's how the, 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 his foot, his leg looked. So immediately I grabbed him, you know, to save his life because I saw there was so, many, uh, so much blood that he lost. Put him down, um, and uh, so we, we, we did the treatment and everything like that, and we gave him the tourniquet to stop the bleeding. I gave him the IV. Our medic got there, and um, so, Right there and then, I was the only in that area, in that time, because my commander was out, you know, um, you know, looking for this guy, for the trigger man. So what I did was I um, put him on the litter, and uh, I was telling the, the, the soldiers that were around to, you know, help me carry him, because we have to rush him to a, an open area where the, the chopper can land. So we got to, um, we couldn't, because it was kind of far away, where we were at, and there was no open area because the, the main road and then the canal. And the main, main road was kind of like far away. So we had to uh, carry him or put him on the Humvee. So all these things are going on where I have to make the decision right there and then. Put him on the Humvee, rush him over there. And when we got to the, to the part, there was no area. There was no open area to, to, um, to get it. So I, I kind of like look around. The chopper was already there. All they did was, you know, um, hovering around, just trying to find, waiting for us to give them the clear to land. Um, so that area where we got him, um, I have to literally go over there, try to, you know, make everything clear. Um, carrying him, we got there, popped the smoke. That's when the, uh, the chopper came down and landed. We got him in. We got the driver. We got the, ha the, the gunner guy in there. Um, but by seeing that, you know, his leg, one of the fastest guys in our platoon at his worst, you know. Uh, I think that's, that's what, I, and that was the incident that, that kept me from moving forward because I kept reaching back to it. I kept blaming myself for it because when we, before we came out of that, that convoy, um, I saw an Iraqi digging. And my mind was, it was my fault that I didn't tell the commander not to go left, but go right, yeah? So it, it was all those, those, those things that I had in my mind that um, I held inside of me. I couldn't, I couldn't let it go up until recently. So and we're going to talk about that. Yes, right? we're going to talk about that. Okay. Yes. So you continued to serve even yes. after this incident. Right. And you finally made your way back home. Right. Uh, you retired, but you ran into some problems. Yes. Some pretty scary situations took place, uh, and you had your family worried because when you came back, of course, uh, you had you had PTSD. Yes. And I don't know if people realize um, Post how real post traumatic. Yes. And how real that disorder, could be yes. uh, to affect people's lives. So uh, you came back home, and you had some some crazy experiences trying to get back into life. Can you share us a little bit about, about those things? Wow. So I came back. 
Um, my second tour, I, I didn't know I had it. Before I left where I was at, I was in Kansas, Fort Riley. Before I left there, I didn't know, because incidents that happened in Iraq where I, I, I completely flip, I, I break stuff. And then I got here, I didn't know I had it. Up until I went to the deployment, I couldn't deploy, but I still had to go through the process of getting the medical stuff. And it got to that point where um, they told me, hey, you need to seek help, because it's on the system that you, need to, you have PTSD. So when I, I started doing all these things, and, and I had uh, some major episodes that, that happened then, where little things that I would flip, and I would start digging holes. And it, it's, it's, it's kind of normal to me because I, that's what we did in Iraq. Digging holes or, or, or a foxhole to hide or to, um, and from that incident, I saw a hole. I saw the, the Humvee in the hole, you know? So from that point, I, was, I, I, I got to that one incident that happened where I told my brother, right? I told my brother to, um, to do something at the house. I left, I came back. It was so small. And I came back and I, I didn't see it done and I was so mad. I beat him up, he was on the ground. My brother-in-law saved his life where I almost hit his head with the, uh, with the metal that I had in my hand. And um, my focus, when I see those kind of things, when I, when I get that PTSD thing, I wanna kill that person. I wanna get that person to done. I don't wanna see that person anymore. So if I don't succeed in killing that person, right, I start flipping around. I, I either I drive my car so fast, or uh, just go around. I just run around the, the hood or the the, the 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 neighborhood and just yelling, you know. So that's what I did that night. I, I, I didn't kill my brother. I got into the car. I drove. I went to um, uh, Valana's house, my girlfriend. Right. I went over there. All I said was, um, I need a shovel. She said, what, what, what are you going to do, do with the shovel? And I said, I need a shovel. And I got the shovel, and I said, get in the car, let's go. So we, we went back to our house, right? And I, that's when I got there, and I started digging. Um, I didn't know none of this stuff going on. And my family were kind of far away. They were, like, screaming. They were saying, what are you doing? And I, all I said was, they're following me. My soldiers are dying. They need me there. All I did was that, yeah? And then all of a sudden, it's, it's that moment where I, I need to hide. I need to get in there and, and hide. But then there's, you know, um, cops showed up, and then they, um, those words, yeah, the words that calms us down is, they said, stand down, soldier, you're safe. You're back here. You're safe, that's the word that really got me to, you know, calm down. Um, and that, the, what, you want me to talk about the incident at the Zibis? Before you get to that, I, I just want you to... I was going to say, the, the greatest understatement of all is when he said, I didn't kill my brother. Yeah. Praise God for that, amen. Yeah. But I want, you to see, I want you to see this picture that he just painted. He's in the front of this house. He had almost killed his brother. And he is frantically digging a hole in his front yard and crawling into it reliving this situation um, from Iraq because as we talked uh, we talked earlier he was carrying a lot of guilt and constantly replaying this in fact you were you'd also shared um, that there were situations where you would put on your rucksack yes. and you would grab a stick yeah. like it was your ru your rifle and you would do patrols in your yep. neighborhood yes. thinking you were still in Iraq yes. but only when I get mad is, is when I th those those flashbacks start coming is that's the only time I get into that point where I put a rucksack on and I had a stick and I was just like going around and I hide behind cars and like looking like that and I'll be like, oh, there's, uh, where's the Iraqis at? I don't see no one, you know, and just like that. Those are the kind of things. And only when I get mad, yeah? Um, yeah, so. So you, you can picture what he was, was, was going through when he came back home and then of course, we had this, this other incident at, at a Zippy's yes. in, in Mililani. Can you share a little bit about so that? So that incident was, um, I got mad at my, uh, the guy that trained me, uh, a bodybuilder trainer, and I m ran into him at, at Zippy's. And um, so I went to say hi to him. He, he totally, like, you know, to me, like, at that time when the PCZ was really bad, like, if somebody looks at you like that way, oh, like, you're ready to, you know? 
if you know what I mean, yeah? I'm not looking at you yeah. that way, by the way. Just, just letting you know. <laughs> I'll point out some people that I think are, are looking at you that way. Uh, we'll have a partnership afterwards. So, <laughs> so, so this guy, you know, he was like, you know, like, get away from me. I don't want to talk to you and all this stuff. And I, I was trying to, like, make, make nice with him, make good, you know, like, hey, you know. But then he kept doing that. So it got to a point where I flipped right there, yeah? So I, like, I didn't care, no, I didn't, I didn't even remember nothing. So all I did was took my shirt off, <laughs> yelling at the guy, Wah! and, you know, cussing, of course, you know, and um, I ran into my car acting like I'm grabbing my gun, which is, there's nothing in there. And I ran back, so all I did was just going off, you know, like, I, um, all I, and did, again, the focus was to kill the guy. Um, I need to get him, you know, and then all of a sudden, right, I had no shirt, cops started showing up, I didn't care, you know, cops are like just right there. Um, all of a sudden, while I was going, I was, ah, like trying to get him, trying to like run into him, right? And all of a sudden, right, this guy, I don't know who it was, but he grabbed I hope you're in the crowd. He grabbed, he, he put the, sh and that was like the, uh, the, 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 the stupidest thing that any, anybody can do when you have PTSD. Because when somebody comes around your back, that's like, you know, you have to kill that person behind you, right? So he grabbed me, all of, I, I remembered, he grabbed me, I went down like that, right? So I'm like this. And this guy came around from, you know, the back of my ear, and he said, brother, do you mind if I pray for you? Just want to let you know that God loves you. And this ain't worth it. So I remember going like this, my head just like this. All of a sudden, he started praying. So I remember crying, right? So I remember crying. All of a sudden, he, he picked me up. So he picked me up. He sat me down like this. And he gave me water. Gave me pastries. And what he said was, what is your name? Where are you from? And all of a sudden, he said, um, he invited me to church. He gave me a card. He said, call me. Call me when, um, call me tomorrow, because tomorrow's Sunday. Call me um, so you can visit our church here in the theater. And that was in Mililani. Word of Life Mililani. Word of Life Mililani. So I didn't know, I, 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 I hugged the guy. That was the last time I saw him. I didn't even see him anymore. Like, but then I never knew it was a person from here, from Word of Life. I still don't remember his name. There was two guys that came. They prayed, and they shared the name of, of the name of Jesus and that healing in my, you know, in me. Um, and that was it. Now he invites you to church. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's by the grace of God. Now he invites you to church. <laughs> 